This is going to be a follow on to my value at risk video where I showed you how to calculate a point estimate for value at risk using a single security portfolio and then again with a multiple security portfolio. In that video, I discussed what it means to calculate value at risk, the possible downsides of that, and then I showed you how I derived this number, expected volatility, using some data downloaded from Yahoo Finance. In this video, we're going to go ahead and use the Monte Carlo method to calculate value at risk, where instead of using a point estimate based on some theoretical distribution, we're going to actually simulate ending values for the portfolio many times and then build a distribution of all those ending values to get at what is the value at risk that way. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to calculate what a possible ending value is for the portfolio. And we're going to use a derivation of the Black-Scholes pricing model to do this. So I've set up a lot of this in advance. And what I'm going to do then is just go ahead and calculate one possible ending value. So we need the exponent of the risk-free rate minus 0.5 times the portfolio variance. We're going to multiply that by the fraction of a year that we're going to be looking to calculate the value at risk for. And so if I'm going 21 days or one trading month into the future, I would calculate it as 21 over 252, the typical number of trading days in a typical year. We're going to add to that the standard deviation times the square root of time. Again, it's going to be the fraction of a year that I'm looking to get this value at risk for. And then we multiply that by a normal random variate. And to make sure that moves randomly, we're going to plug in the rand function here. Okay, so sort of a big and ugly calculation, but this will give us an estimate of what a possible ending value for this portfolio will be 21 days from now. Okay, so in this simulation, it looks like the ending value is about 2% lower than uh, the starting value. Okay, and just to note, I'm using zero as the risk-free rate. When you're valuing options, you are going to take into account the risk-free rate. When we're calculating a VAR, we can put it in here and it would be uh, about 2.5% at this point. It won't make a huge difference in the, the calculation. Okay, so it's going to be up to you whether or not you want to include the uh, risk-free rate. All right, so once we have one simulated ending value, what we need to do is go ahead and make many simulated ending value so that we can build a distribution. To do that, I'm going to use the data table feature in Excel. And first, I'm going to select all the data. So you can see that I'm going to simulate 5,000 possible ending values. I'm going to go to the data tab. And I'm going to select what if analysis. And then I'm going to select data table. Now, this isn't the traditional way we use a data table. Usually, we use a data table connected to a more extensive model, and we're actually calculating it based on varying some variable in that model. Here, we're going to sort of trick Excel, and we're just going to point at an empty cell so it ends up recalculating this equation 5,000 times. So I'll just point here, and I'll click OK. OK, so we can sort of scroll down through and note that each one of these is a possible ending value based on the inputs over here. All right, to calculate this in terms of VAR, we're going to do two VARs. We're going to do a 95% and we're going to do a 99. And to do that, I'm going to use the percentile function. And I'm going to take one minus percentile. OK, it takes two arguments, an array and a K. And so here's my array. And then my K is actually going to be 1 minus 95%, so the fifth percentile. 
Okay, so we can see in that simulation, uh, the 95% uh, loss expected here is 12.2%. Okay, I'm going to repeat the same process for the 99th percentile. I'll just copy the formula down. And we can see there to move out another 4% to be that much more comfortable, uh, we lose almost 17%. All right, so again, if you understand value at risk, we're saying that as a downside risk, this is what we're pretty comfortable saying is the worst possible case. All right, it does actually stop at the 99th percentile, so we don't know what happens out beyond there. All right, to get this in dollar amounts, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply the percent loss by the portfolio value. Okay, so we can see that over the course of a trading month, our maximum downside risk, we think, uh, shouldn't exceed 161,931, uh, 99% confidence level there. The benefit of running a Monte Carlo simulation is we can run as many simulations as we want. And so to get another simulation, you can get it from the formulas tab and then calculate now. The only other thing you might want to do is make a histogram of the portfolio ending values. And I went ahead and did that. All I did was I inserted a pivot table and then in the values, I dropped in our stream of portfolio ending values and I graphed it against itself. And I grouped the data. So if I right click and group here, you'll see that I grouped it by 0 0.025. I end up with a nice histogram and we can see that the distribution of possible ending values is slightly right skewed, all right? And then the value at risk that we're talking about is somewhere down in this area where most of the time portfolio ending values are gonna be up somewhere in here. So I hope that helps with a Monte Carlo simulation of value at risk.